This video was shot on the 16th of March 2020, second day of community quarantine for the COVID-19 pandemic. So if you're watching this video around this time, this video is actually meant for my students in psychological assessment for the second SAM school year 2019-2020. But if you're watching this from the future, please disregard this introduction. Okay? So first of all, to my students, I hope you're well and healthy. And your family members and loved ones are also coping well. I hope you're taking the precautions. Do not go outside unnecessarily. Just stay at home. Stay put. You have so much to do. I know your other teachers have given you supplemental materials, reading materials, videos and I know that some others are holding their online live discussions so we have all those things to work on for this whole month before we go back to school all right and there are so many other things to do at home and I'm sure you're not gonna get bored okay but for our class um, like I mentioned in Google Classroom we're gonna mix things up we're gonna have some adjustments with regards to our plan so for this video i am just gonna talk about these changes in greater detail all right so as i've mentioned we're gonna scrap the rest of the discussion on psychological assessment so that's intelligence testing personality testing the psychological report all right, and we're gonna try to pick it up once we go back to school in a month's time. All right, um, but for now, I'd like us to focus on scale construction. So this is an entirely different topic, but since I prefer shooting videos, recording videos, and uploading them online, and that's because I want you to be able to set your own pace and just choose whenever you're ready to watch the videos um i'm not gonna follow our usual class schedule okay so i'm just gonna post the videos um almost every day all right but i hope you get to catch up on watching the videos all right okay so for the next few minutes I'm going to talk about our final project so you can prepare for it and then we can also work on exercises um, related to our final project okay so for our final project this will be a group project so don't worry don't panic anymore you don't have to work alone on this for our class we can have four groups of three because we're 12 and don't worry also about the thought of having to go outside and meet your group mates because I think this is something that you can work on entirely online. Okay, so I hope you can form your groups now, today, Monday, so that when I upload the succeeding videos throughout the week, you can work on the exercises together as a group. <laughs> Okay, so let's get down to it. In the previous discussions that we have had in class, we've been talking about psychological testing and assessment from the perspective of the test user. So that would be your psychologist, your psychometrician, the HR officer, the guidance counselor, the test administrator. But now that we're moving on to a different territory, scale construction, we have to put on a different hat. So starting now, we have to think like test developers, okay? So we're not any more test users, we're now thinking like a test developer. In psychological testing and assessment, test developers have a broad range of options in terms of the type of test they would want to create and the design that they would like to use. Scales are just one of these options. But for the purpose of our class, we'll just focus on scale construction to simplify our lives. So, what are scales? In general, 
scales are composed of a moderately large number of items to measure just one single construct. So if you've seen um, personality tests with 200 items or more, then that actually follows the scale format. Another thing about scales is that even if there's so many items in just one particular scale, each and every single one of these items measure the same thing. Meaning, theoretically, they mean the same thing. So, even if you interchange the sequence of the items, it wouldn't matter so much because each item is meant to ask the same thing but only in a different way. So, you just rephrase the same thing or find other behavioral manifestations of the same variable that you're trying to measure. Another thing about scales is that the items, or some of the items at least, can be stated in either a positive or a negative way. For example, if a statement is stated positively, then the more positive the response indicate more of the variable that is being measured. And when the scales are answered, you take the aggregate of the responses and you don't consider each individual answer to each item. So, you either find the total or the average to make sense of the response as a whole. And of course, scales possess a certain level of reliability and validity. And as test developers, our aim of course is to make sure that our scales have good psychometric properties for it to be useful. Now, in scale construction, we go through five different stages. Although, on some of these stages, we may have to go back to the previous ones depending on the outcome. But this is just an overview so that you get an idea about what's going to happen before we even start with any of the exercises. So what are these five stages? stage is called the conceptualization stage and at this point the test developer tries to figure out whether there's an actual need for the scale to be developed and it is also during this time that they try to operationally define and precisely define the variable that they would like to measure and also it is during this time that test developers figure out the approach or ways to which he or she would build the items that compose the scale. So those concerns, among other things that we will discuss in the next video, are typically ironed out during the conceptualization stage. The second stage is called the construction stage. This is where you start writing the items. And then it goes through the tryout, or the first run, or first trial that your scale would go through. Then it will proceed to item analysis and finally, it will go through revisions. And then after the revision stage, there is a chance that you have to go back to the construction stage, especially if you lost a significant number of items that need to be replenished. So that's it for now and on the next video, we'll talk about conceptualization some more so that you can start conceptualizing your own scales. But before that, I'm going to link you to a sample scale. This one I have developed along with all my psych assessment classes in the past. And last year, one of the groups revised the scale. So I hope you accomplish the form as soon as possible before we start talking about conceptualization because I'm going to talk about how it was conceptualized and created as well in the next video. Bye guys! Wash your hands, keep the distance, and stay healthy.